for an extremity simulation that would go along with any other bone med, like we talked about just a minute ago, let's say we're going to treat this individual's left humerus. As we discussed last semester, and we probably discussed just a little bit ago, you want to have the arm in a different position than it would naturally lay when the patient's on the table. You do want to get them straight, but you also want to get them to the side of the table. You want to have them scooted to the opposite side of the table from what you're treating. So we're treating a left humerus, the styrofoam, push the patient over to the right side of the table so that you have plenty to work with. Now, you can see that this person, she has her arm flat up against her chest, and there's a definite slope from superior to inferior. We want to be able to reproducibly make that a little different. We want to be able to kick the arm out away from the chest wall. You get to open up the axillary area so you have less erythema and less chance of treating through the lump. Also, you don't want to be able to raise this elbow up so that you have the arm itself parallel with the beam or perpendicular with the CR. That's where a nice headrest comes in. Headrest right up underneath the elbow, rest it there. Their arm, their forearm will then rest across. They'll have either their fingers tucked or grabbing onto a ring thusly. But now we have the elbow kicked out away from the, uh, the chest wall, opens up the axilla, and it actually brings this arm more perpendicular to the CR so you don't have a significant distance difference between the superior and inferior edge of the field. Now that we've got the patient set up, you also want to make sure that you have the headrest fully on or fully off any table pad. You don't want the thing rocking sideways on the side of a table pad. That leads to instability and thus non-reproducibility. Reproducibility is something we're going to talk about every time, as I've said before. This is more reproducible than a lot of other things that you could do to prop the elbow up. You want to have something stable, secure, and simple. Sim simplicity, stability, and stable makes reproducibility. So, we're going to go ahead and run this patient in, and we're going to ballpark it. What you want to do is get the CR kind of in the middle of the arm where you're going to be treating. And then we're going to turn the collimator to approximate the same angle that the arm's running. Put it kind of in the center. On most people, you can palpate, but gently, if they've got a bone mitt, you don't want to be poking around too much, you can palpate where the humerus is. Because depending on how the arm is placed, sometimes the skin and musculature, or lack thereof, can lead you to not really see exactly where the humerus is. So you want to palpate gently. In this particular case, the styrofoam is easy to see. Now, you want to be able to set the field size such that the width is just wide enough to encompass the bone, but have channels running down each side, as we discussed last semester, so that you're not treating the entire width of this extremity. So you want to just treat the bony area and leave lymphatic flow on the laterals, on the inside and the outside. Also, if you make your field as narrow as you can, reproducibly, you're going to have less chance of treating the axilla or the lung as well. So you want to set the field weight such that it is appropriate for what you've discussed with the physician. Sometimes they'll tell you, I want to treat the entire humerus. Sometimes they'll say, shoulder to mid humerus. Whatever it is they've decided, try to replicate that ahead of time. Once you've got everything pretty much set up and ballparked, you also want to ballpark them and post. We're gonna pretend that this styrofoam is actually the, width, the, the, the thickness of the patient. So you're gonna ballpark this such that the laser falls halfway. Once you've kind of decided where everything needs to take place, you can actually take a separation right here and set a proper SSD. Bear in mind that if you move it at any time from there, you'll have to retake your separation and reset your SSD. Now that you've got 
your separation, you've calculated your SSD, and you've set the anterior SSD, you're ready to go ahead and film. You're actually going to go out and you're going to fluoro. So we're going to step out, you're going to fluoro this. You're going to make sure that the collimator actually does match. A lot of times you're going to discover that what you thought the correct collimator angle was is not going to work. So you'll adjust the collimator, adjust the width such that it's, it's appropriate for that particular extremity. Once you have everything set how you like it, call the doctor. The doctor's going to come in and he's going to make any adjustments he thinks is necessary or she. Once she's decided what she wants, you will then notate everything. You're going to notate collimator, table, gantry. So you want to know what the field size is. You want to know what table settings you had, what collimator angle you had, what gantry angle you had. Once you have all of that documented, come inside. Once you come inside the room, immediately go ahead and mark the CR on the patient before they have a chance to move. If your doctor's moved in out or left right, double check your SSD and make sure it's exactly what you expected. Okay, our SSD is good. Once you have that set, the next thing you want to do is take your film. Set your image intensifier, center your II, set your TFD, put your marker on, put your film in, take your x-ray. Go get that x-ray approved before you do anything else. Like we said before, the doctor may change their mind. So you want to go get the film approved. Once the doctor likes it, then you can mark the superior and inferior borders. I like to do that on an extremity as well because you're oftentimes going to be doing a three-point inline setup. That means that the therapists are going to be positioning the arm along the axis of the CR. You can suit CR and inferior marks to get them lined up. It's a fairly reproducible way to do it. I usually don't mark the lateral mark for a humerus because it's just not really reliable. You can put it on there, but the therapist are probably going to ignore it. It's kind of a landmark that they're going for, but it's not usually going to help them. The only time I do do that is if I'm up at the shoulder girdle. If you don't have enough room to put long marks, a lot of times you'll end up with a mark on the chest, a mark at the CR, and a mark lateral so that you can get the entire shoulder set correctly because you can have the shoulder kicked way out, the clavicle will be up out of the field, or you can have it too close to the, uh, the, to the body, but the CR will still look fine. But if you have a mark on the chest, a mark at the CR, and a mark lateral, you'll be able to get all of those three working parts in line with each other. In this particular case, we didn't have to do that. We just have a suit bib and CR. Once you've got the film approved, you can then rotate over to the posterior. You have to mirror your collimator. We're off 14.6, you need to go 14.6 past zero the other direction. One thing to remember, when you're in a simulator, your image intensifier is going to be in your way. If you start rotating and you're looking at your patient, guess what? You could have a problem on the other side. If you don't pay attention, you could run your equipment straight into the table. In this particular case, are we clear, are we clear? Probably not. You'd have to move either the patient or the image intensifier out of the way, rotate all the way around, and then return your image intensifier to the correct location. I like to move the II more than I like moving the patient. I really don't like moving the patient any more than I have to. In some simulations, you're gonna to have to. It's impossible to keep, keep away from doing it. But if you can move the image intensifier instead of the patient, you're going to have better luck because you might forget to put the patient back where they go. Or you not, might not put them back where they go precisely enough. And then you'll have two projected films that are looking at two different things. So if you can get away without moving the patient, do it. Move that intensifier out of the way, rotate over, and then put it back where it goes by centering the II, set the same TFD, and putting the film marker on once you've done that, you're going to do all of the normal things. You're going to take a photograph of the lateral, you're going to take a photograph from the anterior, and you're going to take a photograph of the whole thing. One thing additionally you may do in this particular case, you may take a photograph 
just of the headrest position under the elbow. So that A, if you forget to document exactly what headrest it was that you were using, you've got a picture of it. Number two, there's two different ways you can put this headrest. It can go like this, and it can go like this. You can see that that's going to change the elevation of your elbow. You want to have it the same way every time. I honestly don't care which end you put it on as long as the patient is relatively comfortable and stable. But if you have a photograph of where the elbow fits on the particular headrest, it's going to go a lot better for you because you're going to be able to reproduce it better. So an individual picture of something special is a fourth picture that you can often take. In this particular case, I would take a fourth picture of exactly how that elbow was resting on the headrest itself. Although not perfect, it works. Because if you do like this, it's going to be completely different. Now, the elbow is in a different place. It also can be different depending on how far in out you put it. So in order to be reproducible and the same, take a picture and put it the same every time. After that, as per usual, any marks that you're going to, if you're going to do permanent marks, do them now. If not, protect these marks, educate your patient, and you're finished.